good morning and today the topic to be discussed is rlc transients with dc input in the previous lectures we have seen rl and rc transients and their decay responses and if you see the circuit available today for, uh, for discussion in uh, today's lecture it is going to be an rlc so we have two transient elements l and c connected together so obviously this circuit uh, will become as a second order circuit in the previous case it was first order whether it is an r l or an rc it's it's a basically a first order system and the, since you have two uh, transient elements present this circuit will behave as a second order system so we will be for, we will be ha we have to discuss with uh, a few case studies or cases if if uh, if you are uh, because it becomes a quadratic equation and this quadratic equation based on the roots the roots may take different uh, uh, values possibly it may be a, a, a real root or a complex conjugate root so based on that we we have, we have to extend our analysis also in this particular circuit so if you see the circuit the uh, again the, the the assumptions initially made is the the initial conditions are zero that is no energy is stored in both inductor and capacitor previously as the switch is closed at t is equal to zero only so once the switch is closed you will have a closed circuit so current will be flowing and we are supposed to find what is the expression for the current i of t uh, for different cases we will see that later so based on kvl once the switch is closed based on kvl i can write the applied voltage the algebraic sum of voltages in a closed path is equal to zero or the applied voltage is equal to the voltage drop in the particular circuit so we say v is equal to vr plus vl plus vc so based on ohm's law i can write what is vr what is vl and vc okay so vr is r into i of t vl is l into di by dt and vc is equal to 1 by c integral i of t dt plus v not and v not is already mentioned that this is the initial voltage available in the capacitor it is zero because we say initial conditions are zero no energy is stored in the capacitor no voltage is there and if you take laplace transformation for this first uh, uh, equation you will get v by s plus r into i of s plus l into s i of s minus i of 0 plus 1 by c 1 by s into i of s this one, i of 0 is also Uh, zero because initial condition is zero no energy is stored in the inductor also so this particular equation when transformed becomes like this if i can find i of s common so i take it i of s outside i bring this particular part to the other side so i get v by s into r plus ls plus 1 by sc so i of s is equal to this is the expression now i can see i can take an lcm here so what i do i multiply s into rc plus s squared into lc plus 1 divided by sc now this sc moves can be moved to the numerator it is the denominator part so it can be moved to the uh, numerator part so it becomes s into s into v now this s and this s gets cancelled now the available thing is vc divided by this polynomial s squared lc plus src plus 1 now this polynomial should be should not have a coefficient the coefficient available in the highest order should be 1 so what i have to do i have, i will be taking lc outside so this lc is being taken outside so i will get lc here s squared plus s into rc by lc plus 1 by lc okay now this cc gets cancelled so the available final expression is You will not have a s here. V by L, V by L divided by s square plus s into R L R by L plus one by L C. So as I mentioned, you are getting a second order term. You are getting a second order term, and this second order term depends upon the value of R, L, and C, and particularly based on the value of one by L C and R by L. Okay, this is going to vary. so we already know if you have an equation like a x squared a x squared plus b y uh, b x plus c is equal to 0 to find the value of x the roots of this particular equation since it's a second order equation you will have two roots 
you have a formula what is the formula x is equal to x is equal to x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 a c divided by 2 a we have already studied this the quadratic equation can be the roots of the quadratic equation can be found using per second order system can be used to found, can be found using this particular relation what is it minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4 ac now you compare these two equations ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 to this equation this equation instead of a you have 1 instead of b you have r by l instead of c you are having 1 by lc so i am substituting these values in this equation i will get s is equal to because it is an expressed in x and this is expressed in s so s is equal to minus b so it is going to be minus b by uh, minus r by l plus a uh, minus square root of again r by l the whole squared minus 4 into ac i think i i, I should have given you this yes here it is Minus r by l plus r minus square root of r by l the whole squared minus four into one by lc. This is similar to the of this expression minus b plus r minus square root of b squared minus four ac by two a. Okay, now I can bring this two up. So I'll get I'll I'll be getting minus r by two l plus r minus one by two square root of r by l the whole squared minus four by lc. If this four is taken outside outside of the square root, it will become two. So two comes outside. Since it has been taken out, you will not have a four here. So you will have one by four here, and this one by four, if comes inside this bracket, it will be one by two the whole squared. Okay, so you will get r by two l the whole squared minus one by lc. I think you will be able to understand. This four has been taken outside. Since it is be taken outside of the square root, it becomes two. So you will not have a four here. So you have to divide this. After taking, you have to divide this by one by four. If you bring this one by four inside, it should be squared, two squared. Okay, so it becomes two squared again. Four is there. So r by two l the whole squared minus one by l c. Now two two gets cancelled. Minus r by two l plus r minus square root of r by two l squared minus l by c. This is not going to change, but the real part is not going to change. But this imaginary part, we cannot say it is imaginary part. The second part of this particular root. Modifies itself based on these two variables, that is these two terms. If that is why we will have some few cases. If you see, if this expression r by 2l the whole square is greater than 1 by lc, if I do under 4 and such, let us say if it is if it is 4 and if it is 2, then you will have get a real root there outside uh, uh, square root of a real number. a positive real number we can say if this is becoming lesser than this let us say this is 2 and this is 4 or this is 3 and this is 9 what happens you will have a negative real number uh, i can say negative integer we can say minus term which in square root becomes an imaginary part it becomes a complex uh, complex term so based on this two terms these two terms the the nature of the nature of the root will be changing the character of the root will be changing okay so for simplicity i am i am assuming that s is equal to this term is alpha and this particular term is beta so alpha is equal to minus r by 2l and beta is equal to square root of r by 2l the whole square minus l by c for simplicity so based on this what i can write s is equal to this one so i can write s is equal to alpha plus or minus beta can be written as Yes, minus of alpha plus beta. This is one root, and the other case is yes, minus of alpha minus beta. Is it okay? Since s is equal to alpha plus or minus beta, it is going to be yes. If you bring this alpha plus beta this side, alpha minus beta this side, you will get this. so these are the two factors of this particular equation so i can express this equation in terms of factors like s minus alpha plus beta 
s minus alpha minus beta and this beta value depends on as i we have already mentioned r by 2l the whole squared and 1 by lc so we will go for different cases first case we assume that this r by 2l the whole squared is greater than 1 by lc so if the, if that is the case what happens if r by 2l is greater the roots will be real and it will be different for that case i can write it like alpha plus beta and alpha minus beta so if i express that in partial fractions ifs can be written as k1 by s minus alpha plus beta plus k2 divided by s minus alpha minus beta so this is again of a form what is the form actually 1 by s plus a 1 by s plus a so how can i write laplace inverse it is e power minus at e power minus at if i take laplace inverse if i take laplace inverse for this i will get e power minus at so i of t is equal to k1 e power since you have a minus you will have a plus here so alpha plus beta t plus k2 into alpha minus beta t this becomes this and this expression becomes this so expanding it what i will get this can be written as e power alpha t into e power beta t okay if you have something like e power x plus y i can write this as e power x into e power y so based on that i split this alpha plus beta t into alpha t into e power beta t same way here it is e power alpha t into e power minus beta t now i find e power alpha t common so i take it out e power alpha t into k1 e power beta t plus k2 e power minus beta t this expression should be memorized once you you find this condition that is r by 2l the whole squared is greater than 1 by lc then automatically okay what i can write i can automatically go for it what is that e power alpha t k1 e power beta t plus k2 e power beta t minus beta t uh, that is you find the roots apply that in your partial fractions and the expression will be looking like this if they are asking in a two mark question you can directly write it so you have to memorize this particular equation okay for this condition the circuit behaves as an over damped system based on the frequency the damping changes zeta and omega and that that we will discuss in a separate topic separate it, it, it has to be uh, discussed in a separate uh, topic because it has to be uh, discussed in a very elaborate way so now you understand you keep in mind that this particular condition in this particular condition the circuit behaves as an over damped system over damped system it, the, the the response will be little, little sluggish okay in case 2 what is the case 2 says if both the terms are equal let us go here if you find both the terms are equal then automatically this becomes zero this term becomes zero so only available term is minus r by 2l the whole square uh, minus r by 2l only so it will be repeated twice so you'll have repeated roots the roots are equal and real the roots are equal that is repeated so i will get if i am getting s is equal to minus 2 it will be s minus 2 the whole square so i can you will you will get it like this s minus alpha because alpha is only remain beta will get zero so s minus alpha s minus alpha the whole square so this is how you have to take partial fractions for a repeated root k1 by s minus alpha plus k2 by s minus alpha the whole square that expression can be if you if you take laplace inverse for this it becomes k1 e power alpha t plus k2 t e power alpha t and for this condition the circuit behaves as a critically damped system okay in the third case if r by 2l the whole square is less than 1 by lc this is the third case then automatically what happens if this term is if this term is less than this that is let us assume that this is 1 this is 3 so you will get minus 2 here what is square root of minus 2 square root of minus 2 minus 2 will be what is that 
it will be j plus or minus j 1.414 so what i am getting i am getting it like a complex conjugate term i am getting a complex conjugate term so in the third case in the third case that is r by 2l the whole square is less than 1 by lc the roots are complex conjugate so i will get alpha plus j beta alpha minus j beta so i again this is these roots are complex conjugate and they are they, they can be treated as roots are re, uh, complex and they are different so i can i can follow the same procedure at case 1 k1 divided by s minus the first root plus k2 divided by s minus the second root again i can expand it so this expression if i if i if i take a laplace inverse i can write it like k1 e power alpha plus beta jt plus k2 e power alpha minus beta beta jt and again you can express that e power alpha t into e power beta jt again this can be written as e power alpha t minus e power that is into e power minus j beta t alpha t can be taken outside so this expression looks like this and and keep in mind that if uh, k if our complex conjugate K two, K two will be the complex conjugate value of K one, K one star. That is, if K two is found to be two j, if you say K two is equal to two j, if K two is coming as two j, then automatically K one will be the complex conjugate of this minus two j, or the vice versa. If k1 is found to be minus 2j, then k2 is equal to 2j. Or k2 is found to be 2j, then k1 is equal to minus 2j. The complex conjugate of that. Okay. So based on that, you you finally get an expression which will which you you will get is get it like a sinusoidal term. So I can say for this particular uh, uh, condition, the 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 circuit behaves as a, uh, what you call it as an undamped system an undamped system in the sense it behaves like a uh, the response will be little oscillatory that that is it 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 it, uh, it, it is involved with uh, a sin, sinusoidal components it is involved with sinusoidal components okay so these are the three cases and each case has its own significance and uh, this question may be asked in a, a brief answers in your university question paper also so kindly go through the expressions and try to um uh, get the points what we have discussed so far now we will we will go for a problem a simple problem and i am not complicating the system i am going to have a simple problem let us say a series rlc circuit has r is equal to 50 ohms l is equal to 0.2 henry and c is equal to 50 microfarad connected with 100 volt source the switch is closed at t is equal to 0 find the expression for current assuming relaxed condition relaxed condition in the sense the initial conditions are zero so the circuit looks like this series rlc the voltage is 100 volts which is closed closed at time t is equal to zero so initial conditions are zero so i can say v not and i not will be zero assumed so the expression is voltage applied is equal to the voltage across the resistor the voltage across the inductor and voltage across the capacitor taking laplace inverse uh, laplace transform for that i will get 100 by s 15 to i of s, 0.2 is into i of s, minus i of 0 becomes 0, and here v0 is also 0, so I have not written it here. Now i of s is common, taking it out, then bringing it here, taking LCM. If you take LCM, I will get 50s plus 0.2 s squared plus 20,000 divided by s. If you bring it here, what happens here? The ss gets cancelled, so 100 is equal to, sorry, i of s is equal to 100 divided by 0.2 s squared plus 50s plus 20,000. Now the coefficient of the highest order should be highest power should be one. So I take 0.2 outside. So 0.2 is taken outside. So s square plus 50 by 0.2 s plus 20,000 divided by 0.2. So my expression becomes this 0.2 100 divided by 0.2 becomes 500. So s square plus 50 divided by 0.2 becomes 250, and 20,000 by 0.2 becomes 1 lakh. So this check out what is the condition whether uh, in what is the what is the roots of this you you take a you know, calculator uh, try to find the roots of the uh, equation you will get the complex conjugate term so it is in case 3 case case 3 it is case 3 complex conjugate in the previous derivation we have seen 
So the roots are 125 minus J290.5, uh, 125 plus J290.5. So as I said, the, the residues of the partial fractions will be A and the other one will be the complex conjugate of A, that is A star. So again, taking LCM, denominator gets cancelled. So A into S plus 125.5 plus J290.5. So you, you already know this, you have come across this. Now to find A and A star, that is at least you find A, then you can write A star. So to make this particular part to be zero, I have to add S to B. I have to replace S yes with this term. Minus 125 plus J290. If you put S is equal to minus 125 plus J290.5, this term becomes zero and you have only A term. So you substitute that S instead of S, you substitute minus 125, real term becomes zero and you have a complex term only. So I am getting 581J. And if I can say A becomes, A, A can be written as minus 0 0.5. Uh, 86j so automatically a star is the complex conjugate of this so this 0.86j now replace these two values here so ifs is equal to these two values divided by this now it is simple actually it's a first order term i can directly take laplace inverse so it it, it is it, it is becoming like minus 0.85j e power it is again uh, of the form 1 by s plus a you already have an idea 1 by s plus a can be written as e power minus a t so if you have, a, a, you can represent like A instead of A, it is 125 minus J290.5. So I write it like E power minus A T. This is E power minus A T. Okay. So I, I find this 0.86J as common. So I take it outside. So not, I have split this into two as uh, we have done there. E power minus 125T e into e power minus j uh, 290.5t this i have splitted again this i have splitted okay now i can find these two as common so i take it out these two as common so i take it out so if i take it outside what happens here so i am getting this expression e power uh, these two are taken outside so i am getting an expression like this Okay, so 0.86j is taken outside, e power minus 125t uh, is taken outside, I am getting it like here. Now, you, you remember about the Euler's formula, what is the Euler's formula say, e power j theta, e power j theta minus, I think it is theta, uh, e power j theta minus e power minus j theta divided by 2j can be written as sin theta sin theta now you compare this it is like e power j theta minus e power minus j theta you are not having a 2j so you bring this 2j here you bring this 2j here so it looks like it looks like e power j theta minus e power minus j theta is equal to 2j into sin theta. So this expression can be written like this. 2j into sin. Instead of theta, you are having 250.5t. Clear? Now you multiply this 0.86 with 2, you will get 1.72. Again, a minus is there. j into j becomes minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 becomes 1. So 1.72 e power minus 12t. Oh, sorry, it is not 12t, it is 125t. This 125t, 125t into sin 290.5t is the expression for the provided current expression for the provided circuit. Okay, I hope that you understand the concept. You uh, repeatedly see this video once or twice, you'll be able to understand what I am trying to say. Solve some problems. Maybe in the next lecture, I will give you. Uh, I will try to solve a few more problems related to this and I think you will gather some more ideas in that. We will meet in the next lecture. Thank you.